Hello to everyone. My name is Maria Victoria Mateos. I work as hematologist at the University Hospital of Salamanca in Spain. And I would like to share with you the data of this post hoc analysis of a sustained and detectable measurable residual disease conducted in the gene CESAR study conducted in patients with high risk smoldering myeloma. These data are presented on behalf of the Spanish myeloma group. Here you can see my conflict of interest. Smoldering, the classical definition is based on the presence of M component as well as plasma cell bone marrow infiltration without any crab symptomatology. And it is also well accepted. Smoldering in myeloma is actually a very heterogeneous disease with a different subgroup of patients with a different risk of progression to multiple myeloma. And the Mayo Clinic, as well as the Spanish Myeloma Group, worked since the beginning in order to build models for the identification of the high risk smoldering population. And the International Myeloma Working Group accepted the definition of high risk as those patients in which the progression risk at two years is of approximately 50%. The major model utilized the plasma cell bone marrow infiltration higher than 10%, as well as the M component higher than three, per, three grams per deciliter. And the Spanish model utilized the percentage of aberrant plasma cell within the plasma cell bone marrow compartment more than 95% together with immunoparesia. And based on these two models, the Spanish myeloma group was a pioneer conducting this phase three clinical study in which lenalidomide was compared with observation. And with a median follow-up of 12 years, it is very clear how early treatment with lenalidomide and dexamethasone delayed the time to progression to myeloma, as well as resulted into a significant benefit in overall survival. And this was the rationale for this phase two clinical study, Jean Cesar, in which 90 high risk smoldering myeloma patients were included and treated with induction with six cycles of carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, followed by high dose melphalan and autologous stem cell transplantation, two consolidation cycles of KRT, and maintenance therapy with lenalidomide, 10 milligrams very low dose of dexamethasone, 20 milligrams once per week during two years. This, fix, this means that patients received a fixed duration of therapy approximately three years. And the models for the identification of the high-risk smoldering were the previously showed in the presentation, so those according to the Mayo Clinic or to the Spanish model. It's important to note that this study was designed before the update criteria for the definition of multiple myeloma. This means that in this study, we are going to include, as we will see in the subsequent slides, some patients that today would qualify for myeloma. But also, I would like to remark the fact that PET-CT as well as low-dose CT were the imaging techniques required in this study in order to evaluate the bone disease. The primary objective was to evaluate the undetectable MRD after transplant and sustain it at three and five years after autologous stem cell transplantation. Three years was basically 2020 COVID-19, and this was the reason why we decided to evaluate the sustained MRD at four years. The other secondary endpoints are the response rate, as well as the time to event data, but also the biochemical progressions. In the baseline characteristics of the 90 patients included in this study, just to remark that 33% of the patients met the criteria for the definition of myeloma based on the presence of any one or more of the biomarkers that today serve for the identification of multiple myeloma. This is the patient disposition, and 90 patients started induction, and 70 patients have finalized the treatment. And in the slide, it is clearly represented how some patients had to discontinue because of some adverse events. 
informed consent rejection, or in few cases, biochemical progressive disease. Here you can see the efficacy on the intent to treat patient population. And it's important to see how 60% of the patients after transplant achieve the complete response, 70% after consolidation, and at the end of the two years of maintenance therapy, the MRD negativity rate was 64. If you remember, the primary endpoint was MRD negative after transplant, and if we consider the evaluable population, 68.3% of the patients after transplant were in MRD negative, and four years after autologous stem cell transplantation, 48% of the patients maintained the minimal residual disease as negative. <clears throat> if we follow with the patient disposition, some patients biochemically progress. And we decide also to evaluate these biochemical, progr these biochemical progressions that occurred in 34 patients, and majority once patients had finalized the treatment. And here you can see the time to progression to biochemical progression that the median time has not been reached yet. We have we tried to identify which factors can predict biochemical progression and definitely the achievement of minimal residual disease negative at the end of the maintenance as well as sustained the four years after transplant were the two factors predicting absence of biochemical progression. We decided to do an early intervention in these patients with biochemical progression with the data to Mumab in combination with the POMDEX. And in principle, this second cohort of patients are ongoing. And in principle, the responses deepen over time with no discontinuations because of toxicity. If we put in context of all this data, here you can see the time to progression to multiple myeloma. And after a median follow-up of 70 months, you can see how 94% of the patients remain progression-free. Only five patients progressed to symptomatic disease, and we tried to evaluate which factors can potentially predict progression to myeloma. In the left-hand side of the slide, we see how the presence of any one or more of these ultra-high risk factors that today would qualify for the definition of myeloma predict progression to multiple myeloma, and the other factor is the lack of achievement minimal residual disease negative at the end of the maintenance. And indeed, no progressive disease have occurred in those patients in MRD negative at the end of the maintenance therapy. This is the overall survival. Seven patients have died. What does mean that the overall survival at 70 months was 92%. I would like to conclude saying that this curative approach for high-risk smoldering seems to be encouraging. After transplant, 63% of the evaluable patients achieved MRD negative, and 49% of them evaluable patients maintained it as negative. At 70 months, 94% of the patients have not progressed to myeloma, and the presence of SLIN criteria, as well as the presence of MRD at the end of maintenance, predicted progression to myeloma. At 70 months, 48% of the patients have biochemically progressed the achievement of MRD negative after maintenance and sustained it for years after transplant predicted sustained MRD negativity and rescue therapy with the daratumumab in combination with pomalidomide and dexamethasone at the moment of biochemical progression seems to be encouraging with an overall response rate of 80% and allow majority of the patients to continue with no myeloma defining events that I personally consider that this is going to be the major objective in the management of a high risk smoldering myeloma, to try to build a natural history for a smoldering myeloma in which the patients can potentially receive several lines of therapy, but without any myeloma defining event. And finally, just two things to the Spanish Myeloma Group, to all investigators, as well as patients and families included in this study.